So today we are going to do Python. We're going to give you an overview of Python. What we need to know is that Python is open source, that is it is licensed to be free. We can work with the codes, we can customize it the way we want it to act. So when we do changes to the code, some programmers do it, that's why we, it becomes a new version. So what, the new ver that's why we say it's canonical, because every release has a new number assigned to it. Python is object-oriented lang programming language. They, are, they have been used by startups and tech giants. So whatever, whether the integers, the files, Whatever is in, the, in it, we, we have to consider it as object. Once we understand that everything is term in terms of object, then we will be able to work with it more easily. Just like Java is object oriented. So objects can also be worked with objects. Python is also recommended for aspiring young developers who are interested in pursuing careers in security, networking, and Internet of Things. Yes, Python has been used for Internet of Things. It is a language for Internet of Things. So the name of the Python programming language, where does it come from? It comes from the old BBC television comedy sketch series, which was called Monty Python's Flying Circus. That's where the name Python came from. Now, before we go deep into Python, so this session, we're going to have an overview a bit of programming and Python. A computer is just like a well-trained dog. It responds only to a predetermined set of commands. What I want you to understand by this is that the computer by itself will not be able to do anything. So we have to code. You have to put codes into it. We have to code it to determine how it has to behave, how it has to work. So we have, that's why there are software in it, there are applications in it. Those applications have been programmed to work in a certain way. So then the computer is to, going to act in a certain way. So it has an instruction list, that is a set of commands that will be used inside. It's like the computer's mother tongue, how it's going to behave, what it has to do, if someone does an input, what is it, is it supposed to do? All this has been defined in an instruction list, also abbreviated as IL. Who develops everything? How the computer? Everything has been developed by humans. Source code is like Python. Python is a high-level programming language. It's object oriented, it's high level programming language. So when we are having to code, to put the instruction list, it, it's in a code. This is known as source code. And now when you're going to save it, now we have a source file. Now, there are two important concepts when we talk about programming, not only for Python, for any programming language, Compilation and interpretation. So we have a compiler and we have an interpreter. Both are different. Compiler, what will it do? It will take your program, compile it. That is, it's going to translate it into machine code or into another language, like into machine code 0101. That's the role of the compiler. Once you've compiled it, you can even distribute it wherever you want. Interpreter is slightly different. What does it do? It takes your code and it's going to perform execution. It's going to execute the code, the program. Interpreter goes line by line and starts executing. It will give, when I'm telling you, it's going to, it starts executing, means it, it will give the output. Like, for example, within a program, if you have to take input, 
we are executing the interpreter is working. So it takes the input, translates it, and then give the output. For this reason, we'll say that an interpreter is slightly slower than a compiler. Good. So compilation interpretation, you can go through the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, this you can go for it. Now, we have Python 3 is the new version of Python, if you want to. This is the Python that we're going to use all through our explanation. Now, for today, we are going to explain to you now the different types of Python that exist. All right. So, we have C Python. What you have to understand by C Python, this is the original Python implementation. So it is the one that we normally work with. And it is an interpreted language. So you, you see, this is the most influential Python among all the Pythons in the world. We have codes into C language. Whereas Cypher is like an extension, it's a C extension of Python. It's to automatically translate the Python code into C code. Everything is in C in Python. It, Cypher looks like, uh, let's say, a different programming language. It is a superset of C and Python. That is, it compiles to C. But since it compiles to C language, so it boosts the performance. It's boosting the performance because C can run faster than Python. Another version of Python we have is PyPy, another language Python. If you want speed in Python, you can use PyPy. The main advantage of this, uh, of here, of this part of PyPy is its speed. It is a mature product. It exists since 2003. It also optimizes the code path, PyPy. That's why it's so fast. Whereas Jython, J is for Java here. Why J for Java? Because Jython works on uh, Java infrastructure more effectively. It works with Java Virtual Machine. So Jython is a combination of Java and Python. Now, how do you uh, start with Python? So when we start with Python, first I will request you to go and download Python. How are you going to download? You go on your browser, you type python.org slash download slash. You come to this page, then you have the latest. You get the latest version for Windows. I use Windows. If you, it's Linux, you go down, you will see the version for Linux. For Mac, etc. So you for Windows, we are going to work the one working for Windows. It's dial download Python 3.8.2. This is the page where you're going to download. Now, tools that are needed to work with Python, an editor which will support you in writing the code. All right, and a console in which you can launch your newly written code and stop it forcibly when it gets out of control. And you also need a tool named the debugger, able to launch your code step by step and allowing you to inspect it at each moment of execution. These are three things that are needed to be able to run your Python. So as I told you, you're going to download this. When you download, it's very easy to install. You just go on next, next, next. Then it gets installed, just like I have installed here. Okay, you see the Python that has been installed here. It's 
So I just open it like this. Now I want to open the idol, the app. Same thing. Let's say I want to type print. Hello. Hyphen. We are starting programming. Good. And here it comes. It prints. Hello, Python. We are starting programming. So it's what I told it. Here it's the command print is used. All right. Hello, Python. We are starting programming. And here it displays. Hello Python, we are starting programming. So to print, that's just an example that my Python is working. In the other modules that we're going to do, other, other YouTubes, uh, we're going to delve deeper into Python. So this is the first. Like print here, like in C, we were, we were using printf, uh, system dot out the print ln in um, in Java. Here it's just print keyword. Then this is the syntax it goes round bracket just like in Java. Then we double inverted commas to display a line. So what we want to be displayed in within a line is the double inverted commas. So that's it for today. Thank you.